let us add something a little bit more complicated to the trade winds we just looked at. So, we said trade winds are related to the heating in the tropics and rising air, converging air and Coriolis, right. So, what happens to this rising air? So, remember we looked at the temperature gradients in the vertical in the atmosphere and said the troposphere goes up to the tropopause and then the stratosphere changes the temperature gradient. Essentially that means air that is rising will have to get across this tropopause and somehow manage to go into the changing gradient in the stratosphere. And that is very difficult to do, you need energy to puncture through the tropopause. So, most of the air that is going up will hit the tropopause and then spread along the tropopause to the north and south. So, now let us look at the rising air with the figure that we used for the trade winds. You look carefully here, it is showing that the air that is rising is going up and it is hitting the tropopause in both hemispheres and then it is going north and south, right. And for various reasons that we will not get into now, this air cannot go all the way to the pole. Basically, you can think again of the Coriolis. If the air is trying to go towards the poles, the Coriolis will keep turning it to the right and at some point you will be completely going in the east-west direction. You cannot go north anymore because the Coriolis has completely turned you. At that point, the air sinks. And because you are trying to get air to converge into the rising air in the tropics from the north and south, somewhere the air has to come down, right. Just like when your air is rising, air has to converge. If the air is uh, moving away somewhere above, also means that either it is coming down or it is going up. So, air is going up, hitting the tropopause and going towards the poles in the upper atmosphere near the tropopause. It is going towards higher latitudes, sinking and coming back to converge into this heating tropics that we talked about before. So, this rising air as we said is going into lower pressure. So, it is expanding. There is evaporation because of the warm temperatures near the surface. So, the air is filled with moisture and as the air expands, it cools, which means the moisture condenses, forms clouds and there will be rain, okay. So, wherever there is rising air and convergence, there is rain. The air that sinks is dry air from above. So, as it sinks, it is compressing, just like rising air expands, the sinking air is compressing and warming and it is dry. So, wherever you have sinking air, you have clear skies dry weather, no rain. Wherever you have converging winds, you have rising air, wet air, condensing air, clouds and rainy weather, okay. So, this cell of rising air in the tropics going towards the poles, sinking and coming back in both hemispheres is called the Hadley cell, okay. Hadley was a mathematician and a physicist from the 16th, 17th century. He was one of the very first one to explain why there are trade winds. So, he had seen from the ship observations that there are these trade winds and he realized that the warm air is rising, hence there must be converging air into the tropics and Coriolis, it was before Coriolis, he did not call it Coriolis, he just said because of the rotation of the earth, there will be tilting of the winds, hence you will have trade winds. Hence, this cell is named after him as the Hadley cell. So, what does it mean when you say the air that is coming down is creating clear skies and no rain? So, now you can think of all the deserts. Where are all the deserts on earth? Essentially, they are at the latitude where the Hadley cell is sinking. So, if the Hadley cell is sinking, that means it is creating a dry zone, hence the deserts. So, if you look at a map of the deserts on earth, then they are essentially lined up with where the Hadley cell sinks, except when it comes to India. Why? Because India has uh, the mountains and has the monsoon, instead of being a desert, it is actually getting a monsoon rain. 
So only in the northwest towards Rajasthan, we have a small desert. But if you look at carefully, from the Middle East to Rajasthan, the desert goes off into Mongolia over China to the north. So the Himalayas and the associated monsoonal circulation changes the Hadley cell over the Indian region. But over the other regions, wherever there is sinking air, the termination of the Hadley cell or the downward branch of the Hadley cell, that's where the deserts are located. What happens to the ocean then? When we look at the chlorophyll map, you will see that even the ocean has a desert. Large regions of the ocean where the Hadley cell comes down is actually where there is no chlorophyll from the satellite images. So it's not like ocean has no deserts. Ocean also has deserts, no phytoplankton, and that's where the Hadley cell comes down over the ocean. Thank you.